Nation. Brian Johnson joins us. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Randy. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm, I think I'm appreciating this rain out there yeah. for this newly planted grass that I had at home. Uh, we'll have to get the sprinkler out tonight. I, so. I second that motion. We yeah. have that at Mom's, and I've been yeah, dealing with moving sprinklers yes. on a nightly move. And yeah, Natural rain is a good thing. It's a lot less stress, too. I don't have and, to worry and about it. It looks like you've got the weekend scheduled to be a nice weekend, too. There's going to be some sunshine to dry it back out. Things. So. Perfect. It's just for you. Yeah, so <laughs> got a few things going on at the foundation. Imagine we, have, that. we have a guest with us today, so we'll, yeah. we'll get to Jenny here in a minute. But um, a few things going on. Of course, um, it's almost October. It is very close. Sunday. 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 I got yelled at earlier when Paul. I heard that. I told him, yeah. I heard he, that. He, he's not ready for October yet. Well, one, one thing we always start thinking about this time of year is end of year giving, mm -hmm. um, things like tax planning. Um, I always use the phrase voluntary and involuntary giving. <laughs> there you is a not, difference. You do not have the choice whether you pay taxes. Sometimes if you make a gift to a charity, you can choose to pay less taxes by making that gift. So, um, And also benefiting something locally. So I always encourage folks this time of year as you're thinking about um, tax planning and end of year giving, that's always a good question for your tax professional or financial planner. How much would a gift cost me? Um, and there's a lot of ways to make those gifts. We, in the past, we've talked about things like estate planning or um, a great opportunity that has happened the last few years, IRA rollovers to charities. Um, it helps reduce some income taxes and, and makes a gift towards something that you care about and see locally. So um, it's that time of year to start thinking about that. And you've got a lot of options to got a lot people of options. Can, can do. Um, and, and I'm also going to put a little plug in. Stay tuned for more details, but Giving Tuesday. Oh, yes. I, That'll I be here before you know it. I hear a rumor that WROI may be there Maybe. doing some interviews. Yeah. and Probably a pretty good chance. Have some matching dollars again. So stay tuned for more details in the near future on that. Right. That's right. Is that a teaser? Yeah. Is that what you call it in the business? There, there you go. And that will be here before you know it. It too. will be. It will be. <laughs> Just like October. Yes. Right around the corner. So, um, something else wanted to mention. Um, we've been talking about Charity Tracker, a program that helps organizations collaborate. Um, I know it's it's been a useful tool for some organizations lately, being able to send out some information about needs that they're seeing that their organization may not be able to help with and connecting with other organizations in the community. So um, this is a program that is for nonprofits or, or service providers in our community. Um, and so if you're interested in being part of that or learning more about Charity Tracker, we started a project this summer um, looking at expanding that network and making it even more beneficial for organizations. So um, if you're interested in that and involved with an organization that you think may benefit from knowing more about services available in the community or knowing what other nonprofits do, we'd love to talk to you about that. Something else we have coming up in the near future is a food pantry summit. Mm. Um, it's interesting in the times that we are in, if you've been to the grocery store lately, you know, it's getting kind of expensive. Uh, yes, very um, much so. I walked through there yesterday and looked at prices and thought, you know, that's and that was more that cost that pay. cost just to walk through and look at them. <laughs> yes, almost. So, um, but what we've been doing the last few years is we've been offering a food pantry summit, a, a time for food pantries from our area to come together and collaborate and learn about needs. So this year we have some topics that are obviously food pantry related, but also um, some of the other services that food pantries may help folks find, um, things like housing and um, some of those basic living needs. Um, and one thing that I wanted to mention is we are going to be showing a video. We're going to be at the Times Theater, October 12th. Um, it's a good place to show a video. It's a good place to show a video. We'll yeah. talk a little bit more about videos at the Times Theater yeah. here in a bit. But um, for this, we're, we're hosting the Food Pantry Summit on October 12th at the Times Theater. If, if folks that are involved with food pantries or organizations that may be resources for food pantries are interested in attending. Um, the summit will be from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. that day. Um, but one thing that we're going to be doing is inviting the public to come in over the lunch hour. Mm -hmm. Lunch will be provided. 
there's your hook. So there's come in and hook. have lunch with us. No excuses um, now. We're actually going to be showing a video titled The Working Hungry. Um, a group out of Indianapolis put together this video and they follow the story of three specific families that are are or have been clients of food pantry <coughs> and kind of shares their story of how they how they needed these resources um, it's interesting i recently had the opportunity to um, talk with a local food pantry and i asked them are you seeing new clients and they said yes we're seeing a lot of clients and it's the story often goes it's a family both of the adults are working, they just can't keep up with the bills. Mm -hmm. um, and so having food pantries available for folks like this um, is a great resource. So it's, it's not always the folks that we typically think of that go to a food pantry. It's a lot of folks that are working hard to make ends meet, but just can't quite make it. And when food gets more expensive, it makes it even more difficult. So this actually follows the story of three families in the area. They, when they put this video together, they had some information from our local pantries. Also, um, the Plymouth area is, is interviewed during this video. It's about a half an hour video. Um, and then we have um, a young lady from an organization, Bread for the World, out of Indianapolis coming up to lead a facilitated discussion. So we can kind of talk about the things that are included in that video. Um, I think it would be a great opportunity for folks from the community to come in and learn a little bit more about what our local food pantries are doing and who they're serving. So um, October 12th, if you want to come and, and be part of the viewing of the video The Working Hungry, we'd love to have you join us for lunch over the, the lunch hour from 12 to 1 mm -hmm. um, at the Times Theater. Um, and I think it'll be an a interesting experience for folks like myself that don't necessarily live in that world or help folks in that world every day. We help organizations, but uh, not directly. So, Do they need to register? If they know they're coming, it would be useful for them to let us know that they're coming. Okay. But if, if it just worked out the day of to show up and come have lunch with us and view the video, we'd love to have folks join us as well. So, okay. but yeah, if folks know they're coming, we'd love to know that. But um, just because you have an RSVP doesn't mean okay. that you can't show up day of. So. Perfect. This morning we have a guest with us. Um, Good morning. A well-known guest. A well-known <laughs> guest, not a stranger <laughs> to the radio. She's not a stranger to the radio. Yeah. So we have Jenny Smith with us this morning. And if I can get the right name right, people will know who it is more than, uh, yeah. than, than, yes. her, than her maiden name. There yeah. you go. No. <laughs> well, I bet many people would know her by her maiden That's name. That's right, yeah. exactly. So, that just shows but, how far back we are <laughs> There you go. So, but Jenny is here today to talk about the Women's Giving Circle. Um, she's been involved with this organization since the start and has been um, helping with a lot of things uh, with it, but kind of a neat organization. So I'll put you on the spot and say, what is the Women's Giving Circle? It is a wonderful way for women in the community to come together just with one check and one meeting a year to make a huge impact in the community um, and to have a very real impact on where this money goes and then it's the longevity part of it. So I think it's very appealing because that is how this was just like <coughs> everything at the foundation is set up is to have sustainability. And so the Women's Giving Circle founded probably back in 2010. Yeah. And so the, the women that are part of it, and it's just a yearly commitment, it's $120 a year, and we haven't changed that amount. We, yeah. $120 <laughs> in 2010 is a little different than, yeah. than yes. in yeah. 2023, but still half of that goes into an endowment that has continued to grow, and then half is granted out immediately. And we're now at the point where we have substantial um, monies in the endowment that are used to yeah. pair with that immediate grant giving. So we've been able to increase the amount each year that we are able to give organizations. And yeah. so that, that's the one it's giving. Sorry. So my $120 a year. So disclaimer, me and Randy are not qualified no, to be part of this group. No, no they won't let us in. <laughs> I'll, I'll probably be at the event. Oh, you're you're always a big part of it, Thursday right? night. 
You just because, don't get a vote. Because you are. <laughs> making sure everything shows up and snacks and all that stuff. But yeah, you have the important part. My wife, is a, my wife is a member and she enjoys being a member. But So $120 a year, that doesn't sound like a whole lot. What, what can I do with $120? Well, you know, if I'm, I'm not very good at math, but that's only a $10 a month. Exactly. That may be the reason behind the $120. Mm -hmm. I think that's. We the wanted case. to make it accessible. So um, this is not to say that $120 is is not a big amount for some people, but if especially Randy, if you look at it, it's $10 a month, right. then that's basically a meal at a fast food place anymore. <laughs> yeah. And so it it is a way to invest in the yeah. long term, and that is yeah. what appealed to me. Um, I do enjoy the charitable giving part of the immediate part, but that longevity that's going to be here long after we're here. And, you know, we, Brian and I were just discussing this morning, we do have many women who've been apart that, that aren't with us any longer. They are deceased, and so to think that their gifts that they gave are still impacting uh, people yeah. is pretty awesome. Yeah, it's neat to see that. So, so your $120 a year, what does that do? What, what does that turn into as a group? You mentioned there's many members. Sure. So, and obviously, I mean, this is a great pitch for people to come and join. This is not, well, I guess, it, well, some level is exclusive, right? <laughs> so half of the people can't. But yeah. <laughs> Everybody but me and Randy can join. Yeah. <laughs> There's no initiation or any yeah. big involved. No big pledges you know, or like, yeah, yeah, exactly. You just show, actually, you don't even have to show up. Some people choose yeah. to vote via the um, watching the videos and doing it via the internet. But, um, so that over the years has been $80,000, $80, and that's what we give out in grants. So we have an endowment that's grown to about that as well. Yeah. And so this year we're giving out about $10,000, yeah. right, Ryan? Yeah. And that can make a very real impact yeah. in, in these different organizations. And that a very quick impact. Exactly. And we've also seen, this was something that at least I didn't perceive other people at the foundation very much may have, but because the people who are involved in this group are often people who like to um, have philanthropic giving in many ways, an organization applying for a Women's Giving Circle grant also gets exposure to these philanthropic women, and so many of them then have gone on to support these organizations on their own as well. And so that's been a neat part of this experience in this group. It, it's kind of neat to see how, and really, the Women's Giving Circle is kind of a microcosm of how the Community Foundation works. It's, mm -hmm. it's Jenny and myself that are not independently wealthy, we're not building <laughs> Correct. Groups, yeah, but our gifts together can make a bigger impact in the community. When you start talking about you're given $120 a year and able to make $10,000 in grants, that yeah. that makes a pretty, pretty good return impact. <laughs> so, um, Maybe talk to us a little bit about some of the organizations that have received grants in the past from, so, this, from this group, or if there's, and I'll preface that with, is there one that stands out to you that's been kind of your favorite grant? I didn't ask Jenny this, so we're putting her on the spot, really on the man on the street interview. I have, and I've had the, the honor to be part of the grants committee, which is a smaller group that then decides who the finalists are. We don't decide who actually wins each amount of money, but then those uh, finalists come to the event meeting and they are voted on and, and all receive something. I have a heart for those organizations that are help supporting children in our area. So I would say, um, you know, one of my friends was someone who was passionate about starting Girls on the Run, and so that's been an organization that we've supported. Um, there have been, you know, like one school, one book with Real Elementary School, which is really fun to see. You know, they, they just do a big, fun event and, and make that such a celebration, and they can do that through donations, through uh, places like, like the Women's Giving Circle. Um, we've also done things like, you know, I really appreciate Compassionate Health Center and the work that they've done for so many years, and they've really had to pivot what kind of work they've done as the healthcare landscape has changed, but they've still been um, a really important part of the community, and so that's something that, that we've supported. It, it's neat to see all the, the wide range of projects, um, like you mentioned, some of these organizations that literally save lives mm -hmm. that's a pretty significant impact when you say you know what because this organization was here 
we have these people in our community. So you know, we need to see that. So so we have a granting event coming up tomorrow. We do. We said we'd say more about the Tugs Theater. That's right. And I'm so excited that it's, I mean, Brian and I have talked about this series because we collaborate on where we're going to host it. It's been at different places. And yeah. anyone who's looked at trying to book an event in the area knows that there's a limited amount of yeah. space for those kinds of things. And um, so for years, we've been excited to be able to host it at the Times. <laughs> and the Times has been a recipient obviously of many community foundation grants but also women's giving circle grants yeah. and so that will be tomorrow night yeah. and anyone um, in fulton county who would like to be a part of this that uh, is welcome to come you don't need a special invitation um, that's a wonderful group of really encouraging women as well welcoming women and so that will be where our final final grantees our finalists will present um, and this okay so there's a lot of negative things about the pandemic. But a silver lining is for years, Brian and Corinne have wanted, Corinne from the foundation as well, have wanted to do video granting instead <laughs> yeah. of you know us just reading all right, of these right. packets, right? And um, so because of the pandemic, we were virtual yeah. for a couple of years and that did push us into the video granting. Yeah. And so now all of our um, prospective grantees do a simple video and send it in. And so that will be exciting, yeah. but this will we'll be the first time we can play screen. it on a big yeah. screen. So it's exactly. always a great opportunity. <laughs> so maybe talk to us and say, so the event is tomorrow night at 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, women show up if you're interested. Um, like Jenny said, membership dues, $120 a year um, if, if somebody wants to show up the night of we let them oh, sure. pay and they can vote and they can make an impact together um, and i do want to mention too this is something that i've been excited as the foundation has grown and changed is that i'm really bad at remembering how to check book on yeah. me <laughs> yeah. and so i would get places and it would be like oh so brian's calling me later hey your dues haven't been paid yet. Yeah. You know, I'd make it work, right? Get it in. But now you can do it online. Ah. Yeah, so you can pay your Women's Giving Circle dues on the foundation website, NICF.org, correct? Very good. And so then that just makes it easy. Just do it while you're thinking about it right yeah. now. You can yeah. pay with that credit debit card if you want. And of course, you can put a check in the mail to the foundation or bring yeah. check or cash to the, to the event. And if, if we have members that are wondering if they've paid their dues, feel free to do that. Um, let, it, let us know. Yeah. We, always, we have a few that are paid for 2024, which is great because we always, that helps us, helps us build that endowment mm -hmm. fund and helps us um, have a little bit better idea of what we can grant out. A um, little challenge, I did tell Jenny, we have one member paid for 2025. Wow. <laughs> it's so. not Jenny's. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm proud of that member to think so yes. far ahead. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so we've talked about some grants. Maybe give us an idea of our finalists for this year. We, we have those and we'll be, as you said, the members will be voting on that tomorrow. And all of these finalists will get at least $1,000 for the grant, which will, for the most part, that's as much or in some cases more than what they're asking for. Mm -hmm. But tell us a little bit about some of the finalists that we're going to be seeing tomorrow evening. Well, it's a great example of the variety because these are organizations that hit different needs within the community. Yeah. And we do evaluate these based on a rubric. And one of those is, is this a segment of our community that the needs aren't being met? And we also, um, it's not a hard and fast rule, but have thought very strongly about liking to be able to support with the funding that we have a whole project mm -hmm. instead of like an ongoing yeah. operational fund or something like that, a whole project. And that would be um, the case for the majority of these. So Casting Robotics, they presented um, in their video, it was really cool, a lot of show and tell on the robotics yeah. that they have. And so they have some equipment that they need Apparently to update. robots have brains. I guess, and so we need to update Scary, the brain. Yeah. Yes. They're programmed brains. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, looks like a kind of cool product. Yeah. I, I was watching the video and thinking, ooh, I, can I go play with this stuff? Well, Brian, I'm sure they're always Brian. looking for volunteers. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes, yeah, so we uh, have them coming in. We also have the Fulton County Animal Center. Um, specifically, again, like we said, we like specific projects. This is for a um, cat spay and neuter 
specifically for those that, that may have community cats or barn cats or something yeah. like that. And it's becoming more and more of an issue. And in fact, our granting committee when watching it, several of the people said that it was an issue in their neighborhood. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, so we're working, mm -hmm. helping Bob Barker control the cat population. <laughs> exactly. For those of you that in watched. honor of Bob, I used to, yeah. well, usually when I would see it, it would be at Randy's house. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, well, as long that's, as my babysitter or something. That's a good thing. Yeah. And, and yeah, stop making me feel old. <laughs> Warning, you may see videos of cute kittens. Oh, yeah. yes, yes. Maybe maybe the, the flip side of that would be people who choose to go in and if you, I was going to say, if you like cute kittens and want to adopt some the Sorry, I'm not, shelters. I'm not allowing my wife to come in. <laughs> <laughs> well, listeners, oh, no. you'll have to, <laughs> she you'll have to help out now. Randy's wife. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't need no more cute kittens. <laughs> <laughs> uh. We also have a Liberty Township Park. They have really, like, they just have a passionate group down there, Linda Wade and, and the rest of her team. And so they're looking to modernize some areas in their park restrooms and so on. <clears throat> uh, Imagination Library. Now this is, again, so we've talked about some, like the Animal Center that's been around a little bit, and Liberty Township Park even longer. Imagination Library, that's something new to Fulton County, and so this would help provide some funding in the partnership between the Ladybug Organization and the Fulton County Public Library to bring Dolly Parton's Imagination Library to Fulton County. Awesome. And, and I don't think I imagined it, but I <laughs> think I heard an elementary principal this morning talking on the radio about the importance of reading. He did. Um, he did. Which is where this project right. really, really goes with that, yeah. helping children birth through five years old yes, they get have those opportunities. Book every month mailed yeah. to their home. Wow. You know, and those are selected by the Dolly Parton organization and it's it's a really cool opportunity that Fulton County's been kind of an island. The there have been surrounding counties that have been doing this a little while and um, so there's some local people really interested and Governor Mulcom also that's been a big push of his in the last few months. So yeah. this is an opportunity for the women's giving circle to help with that seed money here. And then Recovery Cafe. So this was, again, nice to provide some variety here. We know Pat Brown, and we also look in our rubric, does an organization have um, sustainability and have they met some of their goals? And definitely when we have some passion leaders like Pat, we can see that. They have a therapist in their office right now, a licensed therapist that their clients can access at no cost to the clients. And he has been um, on top of looking for outside grant funding for that sustainability factor, but needs a little stop gap until that state money comes in. And so that was, he was asking for some support for that. So we're excited to be able to, we know that, like Brian said, each of these will have at least $1,000 when they come in that night and it's on the walkway with more. Sounds like a great event. It we're hoping it is. Yes. Should should be good. Come see the theater. If you haven't been in the theater, come check it out. Mm -hmm. So, Jenny, maybe invite women listening to join. Sure. If so, if you are a woman in Fulton County and you're interested, please do reach out. You can come to the meeting. You can look at the website. Learn a little bit more about what we are about. Again, that's nicf.org. If uh, you don't qualify because you're not a woman, but you have a woman in your life that would qualify yeah. <laughs> to be anyone 18 and older, and we have a variety of ages, and that's wonderful. Yeah. It's another place in the community to mix yeah. and get to know people that you may not um, walk by every day, and that's a, an extra benefit too. So please do come and join us because the more women we have, the more funds we can grant and the more sustainable the organization is. And I'll just say congratulations to the finalists. Yes. Um, we had a good group of videos this year, um, applicants. Um, thank you to everybody who put the time into that. Thank you to the folks that are, a lot of these organizations are entirely volunteer run. Mm -hmm. um, and so those volunteers that put their time and talents and treasure into <coughs> making sure these services are available um, for our community, it, it's a great Thing to see um, and most of all thank you to all the members thank you Jenny and to all the members that are part of this group that make this ten thousand dollars in grants possible with your hundred and twenty dollars a year to you and it's, it's neat to see that um, anything you want to leave listeners with as we wrap up the program I just want to say thank you to you Brian and the foundation and all of the people at that office that work very hard to keep this going 
And um, thank you to all the volunteers in the community that work very hard um, in this organization and others. Um, it is not exclusive. You could be part of this and be a part of other philanthropic organizations. We'd love to have you. So thank you. And thank you, Randy, for the opportunity. Hey, no problem. Well, if you have questions um, about what we've talked about today, again, Food Pantry Summit coming up on October 12th. Um, Women's Giving Circle event coming up tomorrow evening, mm -hmm. 6 p.m. If you're watching the replay on RTC Channel 4, it's probably too late for this, <laughs> but um, learn more We're about never too late for other time, to, yeah. time to join for next year. Mm -hmm. um, we'd love to have um, ladies join us for the event um, tomorrow evening um, in the year. Time to think about that charitable giving that you may want to do before the end of the year. Um, if you have questions about things we talked about, want more information about the Women's Giving Circle, always um, check us out online, nicf.org. Um, there's a donate button or there's a specific page with Women's Giving Circle information. You can find out about that there. Um, like us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. We also do have a Women's Giving Circle specific Facebook page that is fairly new. So if you want to join that, Feel free to do that as well. Um, give us a call, 574-224-3223, or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas or questions or opportunities you are thinking about for Fulton County. Again, remind us, tomorrow night, what time? Tomorrow night, 6 p.m., Times Theater. Yeah. It'll be a great event. We'll have some theater-type food. Ooh. Theme. We may smell popcorn <laughs> downtown <laughs> Rochester about that time. There you go. Um, and some other great food from local establishments. And uh, Looking forward to an event and looking forward to being able to hand out $10,000 in grants because of um, women's membership in this organization. Jenny, congratulations to you and your organization. Best of luck to, uh, tomorrow night and uh, hopefully you have a a great turnout. Thank you so much, Randy. Brian, thanks for stopping by and uh, updating us as always. We'll talk to you again next month. Thanks for having us, Randy. That's the Community Foundation here on the Giant FM Morning Show. That's going to do it for the Giant FM Morning Show. We'll be back tomorrow morning starting at 6 a.m. Have a great Wednesday, everybody. See you.